Hi there YouTube. Today's video is about doing a movie review on Black Panther the movie. Um, to start things off I would like to just say that uh, my critique of the movie is twofold. I'm going to first talk about just how I enjoyed the movie as far as the storyline, the acting, um, the visuals, all the special effects, things of that nature. And then I'm going to go deeper into the message and meaning behind the, the movie. So first off, I'd like to say that I definitely enjoyed the movie. Um, I went to see the movie with my husband and it was his second time watching it. He is a diehard Marvel comic book fan, so he knows about all the characters and their backstories, unlike myself. I mean, I know the, I guess, the most prominent ones, but uh, Black Panther, that storyline was not really familiar to me, so, um, but I really enjoyed um, the movie as far as just how everything was shot. I thought that Ryan Coogler did an excellent job directing the movie, and I um, just I like the costumes. I love the acting, um, the drama. It was very intense and, and very realistic to me, and um, so yeah. The, the the best thing about the movie, of course, I I think that it did have a very deep message. Um, behind it, dealing with um, sort of like the tale of two cities. It's basically uh, how opportunity, um, opportunity and resources and privilege, all of that ties in and how you're raised and um, things that you experience in your childhood, all of those things factor into the person that you will become. Um, and they help to shape you and mold you as a person. And your character is shaped by all of those things that happen to you. And um, that was definitely the case with the characters, as we saw. Um, and, um, you know, most reviews that I've seen are definitely hitting hard about the Killmonger um, character as far as was he the true hero of the movie. And I tend to, um, I understand how a lot of people can feel that uh, he should be considered the hero and this and the, um, I guess, just knowing how he said that he wanted to help um, black people who were not privileged, who were struggling in the world, who had um, a lack of resources and opportunities, and who had been victims of colonialism, slavery, and um, oppression, and things of that nature. So um, from that standpoint he was sort of considered to be um, the hero for even bringing up those points um, in relation to Wakanda which was a country that was um, very vast and um, di well not diverse, it was very um, What's the word? Oh my gosh. They were very resourceful. It had a lot to offer its people because of the very rare metal um, vibranium that they had there. And they were able, and because they had not ever been colonized, um, they were able to um, have growth and development and resources and being able to have the freedom to be able to um, grow as much and as far as they they wanted to um, without having any outside hindrances and so as comparing that um, environment 
and then the rest of the world that you know black people who had been struggling because like I said um, slavery um, um, colonization lack of opportunity lack of resources just all the things that we know exist today um, that also existed in the movie the problem that I have of course with this is that what I am seeing a lot of is a debate between um, it's really two schools of thought at least two schools of thought um, pertaining to the african-american community now of course those who are siding with Killmonger say that he represents black people and our plight and what our we struggle as us but at the same time I, I question that because he is the villain and his name is Killmonger because he literally is a killer. He, he kills. And, you know, a monger is someone who promotes something. So he literally is someone who is killing. He make, makes his living from killing. He has tatted up his body to prove how many kills he has made over, his, over the course of his life. And um, I just did not see any um, redeeming qualities in him as far as, you know, him wanting to help others. Um, he was a mercenary, after all. He was not a missionary, but a mercenary, and he killed for money. And he was also um, in alliance with Ulysses Claw, the villain, who was also the, the man responsible for um, killing T'Challa's dad, T'Chaka. So um, it just seemed like he was out for himself individually as opposed to a whole group of people, a nation of people, you know, like he, I just did not see that he cared for 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 anyone other than himself and of course when you see his backstory and see what happened with his dad who was um, the brother of Tashaka and you see that when he was a little boy and he um, found his father dead I mean whose heart wasn't wrenched because of that thing of course we felt very sorry for him and we um, felt for him but it goes back to choices in life you know what we choose to do um, what are we going to make out of our lives? Um, something bad that happens, um, what are you going to do? But his, his whole aim, of course, was revenge and driven to become, I guess, one day the king of Wakanda and to sit on the throne. So, but most of the reviews, like I said, they, they are dealing with those two subject matters, but what I wanted to do also was to dig deeper. To dig deeper and to really address more so the African American community because one thing that we have to realize is that Wakanda represented um, how successful a black country could be when not stifled or limited by outside forces. Okay. And how they were able to, to develop and to grow and everything of, of that nature. But um, what they failed to realize is that Wakanda represents the elite. Um, a country that is self-sufficient, self-sustaining, um, they have no want, they have no need to seek other outside assistance or things of that nature because they are self-contained. And usually in those types of cases, um, they are not looking to reach out. I mean, outreach is not on the top of their list. And that's how it works in the actual world today. Also, Wakanda to me represents the Egyptian culture. 
it represents Egypt okay um, <clears throat> because obviously the same types of belief systems and uh, if you know the backstory of Wakanda and the Black Panther cult they did believe of course gods and goddesses magic we could call it witchcraft um, the the hidden secrets things of that of that nature um, all of these things were also represented in Wakanda and um, of course as a Christian my thought is here we go again it seems though it, it seems as though black people love to get on board with anything that is you know promoting all black people in a light of we were kings and queens that you're a god you're a goddess but the whole point in that is Genesis chapter 3 when the serpent beguiled Eve and told her ye shall be as gods that has been the driving force and the number one method that Satan uses against people to make people believe that they are as gods and that they make their own rules that they do not have to bow down that they are the leaders and the and as we know um, Marvel is coming out with Avengers Infinity War and anyone who keeps up with these Marvel comics um, especially a Christian should realize that all of these superheroes gods goddesses people with special powers witches warlocks whomever mutants these characters all are depicting all are depicting Nephilim or the Nephilim of the Bible when they talk about how the fallen angels the ones who rebelled against God in heaven who were cast out of heaven with Lucifer saw beautiful women the women or the daughters of men on earth and um, had children with them their offspring included giants like real giants such as being depicted in infinity war and um, hybrids creatures that were half human half something else that looked like things that you see in sci-fi movies okay in Disney movies one thing that we have to remember regarding the Egyptian Empire is that it failed it failed utterly fail because God's wrath came against Egypt just as Lucifer fell and the fallen angels they fell from heaven trying to be like the Most High God as far as the Hebrew Israelites the ones who were disobedient taking on the practices of the Egyptians later died in the wilderness they fell by the wayside because of their disobedience to God the Most High God so anything that is steering us away from God Almighty and making us believe that we are gods and goddesses with powers and abilities being greater and more and more able than others that is the same spirit that Lucifer has because in heaven when he fell he was coveting to be like the Most High God and wanted to overthrow him because he did not want to obey he did not want to adhere 
the Bible is clear about what we are to do as followers of Christ. We must deny ourselves, deny ourselves, and follow after Christ. Pick up our cross and follow him denying ourselves and that is why so many people reject the Bible because they do not want to reject or to deny themselves they do not want to deny their way their beliefs their sins what I've also come to realize is that a lot of black men especially gravitate to Killmonger being the actual hero in the movie because of what he said at the end before he died. When you get deep, okay, they say, oh, he got deep. We can all relate to what he said, but let me just quote what he said. Bury me in the ocean with my ancestors that jumped from ships because they knew death was better than bondage. And yes, our ancestors did jump from ships so that they could be free and remain free. And just even though they were chained or, you know, maybe some of them got a loose and they said, well, let me just try to swim, just try to escape. OK, but they did nothing wrong. They were snatched up from their homes to become slaves in a foreign land. How is that the same thing as what Killmonger went through? He was a mercenary, a hired killer who did many wrongs. He did not care about other people. He burned the heart-shaped plants that they were growing there in Wakanda for future kings. So he, he wanted them to burn it down this is after, mind you, you know, he had killed many people, including his girlfriend. Some people make allowances for that as well. He did well. He had to do what he had to do. So basically anything that's black, anything that sounds like, oh, yeah, he, he's a revolutionary. He's militant. Is right. But, oh, how wrong he was to believe that death is better than bondage. If you die unsaved, hell is not some invention by the white man as some state. Those who believe that, you bet to read the Bible. The Bible is God's word. We cannot help who has misinterpreted, misapplied the Bible over these years. Read the Bible and believe it. Hell is real and so is heaven. So it is your choice. But to say that Killmonger, yeah, he was the hero because he, he would rather die than to see bondage, even though he deserved it. He wasn't being held accountable. He did not want to be held accountable. So when King T'Challa offered to save his life, and he said that, that did not represent strength to me. It represented someone who would rather die than face the consequences of their actions. And pride is the main reason why, because they don't want to give up being who they are so that they can be proud in that. When we are to be humble, we are not to be puffed up. So when you deny yourself, that is the opposite of being celebrated and worshipped the way a lot of these people want to be. Because of course they said, well, T'Challa is like an Uncle Tom who is not helping his own people. But again, I ask, since when has being black been the only thing, you know, requirement for helping other black people? And for people to understand that this has very little to do with race, because going back to Egypt, if you understand Egyptian culture and the true history, 
that Egyptians were definitely black people, but guess who else was black? The Hebrew Israelites. So you had black people enslaving and abusing other black people. It actually shouldn't be too shocking because if you recall the movie Roots, when Kunta Kinte was captured by the mercenaries, and I watched this as a, as a little child and it affected me really deeply because when I saw the pleasure and delight in the black man's face, the one who was capturing Kunta Kinte, and Kunta Kinte was fighting with all of his might to try to get free from the shackles and the bondage, knowing that he was now a slave, and to see the delight in a black man's face over another black man who was being captured and denied his freedom, that really affected me deeply. But that proves this point. The Egyptians enslaved the Israelites. Okay? And <clears throat> Egypt represents, once again, paganism, idolatry, um, gods and goddesses seeking esoteric knowledge and powers and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, just different things of that nature. That is what Egypt represented. And we know that, um, according to the Bible, the Hebrew Israelites fell because they had taken on the customs and the ritual practices of their captors, of their oppressors. So in their mind and in their heart, they too were Egyptian because they took on the, the, the ceremonies and the customs and the ways of those people. And that's the same as today. Black people who love to go back to, oh, well, yeah, this was Egypt. This is the, the pyramids and Nefertiti and gods and goddesses and pharaohs not even realizing that these were our oppressors. These were oppressors and they had plenty of resources. But did they help anyone? Did they ever think about, oh, we're going to help these other people over here. No. So in like manner, I felt that it was um, a little dubious for, I, I didn't understand how people were thinking, okay, Wakanda should be helping other poor or just helping poor countries. They weren't even helping other African countries that have been colonized. So I don't understand why they were thinking, oh, you should be helping all the blacks in the rest of the world when they were so disconnected from that. They were um, away from that and um, just they, they had their own world that they were living in, not, you know, not um, knowing about anything that was pretty much, I mean, they did know what was going on in the outside world, but it was not affecting them at all, in the very least. And of course, they had their spies that were out there in the world, and they were um, making it a point for them to go out and to learn things and to um, bring back um, their findings so that they could, you know, keep up with certain things and aspects of the world. Um, however, they had the upper hand and the advantage because no one even knew for the most part that they even existed okay so that was how that was a part of their um, up, you know, ability to obtain the upper hand because they knew about the rest of the world but the rest of the world did not know about them and they had a very precious metal that was very precious and very um, powerful and um, it could absorb sound and just very potent. And so, as but getting back to just the dichotomy, it's like, on the one hand, people who are saying, well, yeah, Killmonger wanted 
the, the Wakandans to help all the black people in the world. And so the question then becomes, every black person in the world? I mean, what about their sanity? Do they have, are they sane? Um, do they have morals? What about their character? Um, their belief system? You know, can they be trusted? Um, you know, can it just, is it just any black person? Any black person will do. Or, you know, do you have to look at the, the deeper things? Because um, it goes back to, you can say, okay, the white man is our enemy. But who also enslaved black people? And who has betrayed black people? If you were saying that you have not been betrayed by a black person and you're black, that you do not know of any black people who have killed other black people or robbed or stolen from them, um, lied to them, mistreated them in any way, you know. So it's not about race so much as it is about class and control and having leverage over people in the situation because of your, your class and your socioeconomic condition. And of course, like I said, your power, what you can control. So it goes back to that. So my point in all of this is also just to remind us to not be fooled, to not be tricked. Um, you know, the, when they were trying to um, have T'Challa when he was going over to become king and they had to bury him in the sand and, you know, a lot of this of what the ancestors that they kept doing, you know, conjuring up ancestors or just going through these different rituals that were summoning the, the ancestors and going into a different, um, like, you know, the spirit realm to see their old, their loved ones who have passed on. All of that ties back to Egypt. It ties back to Egypt, and that, those were the customs that they that they had and they used. So it dealt a lot with necromancy, conjuring up the dead. Which in reality, you're not conjuring up your loved ones. You're conjuring up evil demonic spirits, masquerading as your loved ones. But to see how black people love to just jump on the bandwagon and say, oh, well, this is our culture. This is, this is what our ancestors did before, um, you know, slavery and before colonization. We had our own religion. We had this, we had that. And they will actually, just for the sake of saying, oh, well, our ancestors did it, right or wrong, if our ancestors did it, then we should do it, and we should continue to practice this. And that's absurd. It's absolutely yeah, absurd. So I think that Black Panther, as great as the movie was visually and entertainment-wise, and it did give a good socioeconomic message, because at the end of the day, I do believe that, yes, we should help as many people as we possibly can. But that is what the Bible teaches that we should help our fellow man as every man has need has a need we should help we should help the widows the homeless the fatherless the poor the sick the shut-in you know but guess who does it individually we can do it each person can help someone and collectively like the church body I think that we need to come back to that part rather than um, saying, oh, well, this, this huge country over here has to help us. You know, each person can help, and that is how it was with the apostles. Um, they would give, um, and, and anyone a part of the church body would just give as they had to give.
then it will be given to those. To look at the Bible, Luke 12, 48. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. This is a biblical, biblical teaching, and that is teaching that we help people. That is the nice thing to do. To be Christ-like is to help the widows, help the poor, help the fatherless, help those in need, help the believers, help the non-believers, help anyone who is in need. And, um, and as, as men need and as they are in need, um, that is what you should give to them. You know, this is, this is what the church should be doing. And unfortunately, because the church is not doing that as much as they should today, a lot of people have become disillusioned by it. And so they want to throw out the baby with the bathwater and say, well, if there are some people who are rogue, who have um, fallen away from the truth, who are in apostasy, who are using the Bible um, as a way to control and manipulate people rather than to um, use it as a teaching um, and tool, you know, to preach and to teach people um, what thus said the Lord instead of what says man um, and, and teaching them um, how to be good stewards and um, how to love and, you know, just all the things that the Bible has to offer to give the history of where we come from, of who we are, of whose we are, that we have purpose in this life. I mean, giving them hope and peace through the Word of God, through the Gospel, the good news that Jesus came to set the captive free, that He died for our sins, that He fulfilled all righteousness. Um, when those people keep that part away and just talk about you know, the poor giving them money, you know, money, 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 give me, give me, give me. Obviously, yes, people are going to become disillusioned, but they, what they do is they end up rejecting Jesus Christ because of the messenger. And rather than having a relationship with him, they have been um, blocked, I would say, by false teachers and false preachers. And that is where the true church comes in, the believers, the body of Christ, who come to spread the good news and to tell everyone that this is the day the Lord has made, that God the Father, He loved the world so much, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Um, we, we have to start somewhere and I, I believe that if we can do that then yes um, each person helping each other that is what it's all about you know but let's be honest most people do not want to help or they don't trust helping people they're like well how do I know this person is really homeless how do I really know that this person doesn't have food to eat you know um, you better get yourself a job pull yourself up by the bootstraps you know so um, we have most people have that mentality within them so that's why in the movie I was just very um, or from the movie just hearing the different comments from people um, I, I was questioning why they were so shocked and surprised that uh, things like that happen I mean, the rich don't want to give to the poor. That's unheard of. That we should help our fellow man as every man has need, has a need, we should help. We should help the widows, the homeless, the fatherless, the poor, the sick, the shut-in, you know. But guess who does it? 
individually we can do it. But to expect some place like Wakanda, who was a very rich country, to reach out, I mean, that's, you know, people will say, well, America, that's why we're in the condition it is now. No, I, I disagree. I mean, America has created more wars and created, unfortunately, more deaths than they have actually helped people, if, if truth be told. Um, so sometimes the bigger it is, the least people are being actually helped. And then you don't know what's really going on in it. And with the, with the mission that you're trying to achieve, if you're saying, we want to help these people, our country's going to do this and give them aid, you know, is it really going to the, to the people who are in need or is it going to a corrupt government? So, you know, from that standpoint, I always say it's just better to help people individually, one-on-one, um, -on -one, as much as possible. But yet, um, but yes, just going back to the Egyptian culture, it just, to me, it just makes more sense that that is um, the true, true message of the movie that black people are going to want to go back to the pagan beliefs that they once had. And actually that are still being held today because look at how many secret societies black people would like to be a part of whether they're Freemasonry, um, sororities, fraternities, any type of thing that is glorifying gods, goddesses, um, and having certain powers and, and secrets and things of that nature black people just jump on board like okay this is ours this is ours right wrong or indifferent they just they're jumping on that bandwagon which we should not so that is my I guess the cautionary tale part of the my review for the Black Panther or Black Panther because we should just be so very careful as to what we embrace and what we follow and just understand that um, we do have a choice it is we do have free will and me as a Christian I feel like I am sort of in between because you know you have people as I said who believe that we are Hebrew Israelites black people in America are he the Hebrew Israelites spoken of in the Old Testament I believe that Deuteronomy 28 does actually um, describe what our ancestors went through. We also have to know that, okay, the whole Bible, the Bible itself has to be um, used and not just picking and choosing certain passages that you're comfortable with, you know, because we are to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and, and strength. And we are to love others, our neighbors, as we love ourselves. Okay? And when, once we start there and we are actually loving people regardless of color or gender or age or ethnicity or nationality, things of that nature, then yes, we can have a better world. We can have a better world, but as long as there's someone who wants to be on top, like Killmonger, yes, we're going to start the whole world over. You know, we're going to be on top. Either way, it is nothing but it's going to just end up in the same, with the same result. Because if there's someone who's being oppressed, there's always going to be a fight to, and a struggle to get them back on top as opposed to just helping out your fellow man, that is what we're supposed to do, regardless of, because you cannot tell who your enemy is based on the color of their skin. Killmonger killed black people, white people, brown people, yellow people, all kinds of people, okay? So just remember that.
not to embrace killers as our heroes just because they have a revolutionary spirit and you feel like they are um, trying to lead us into something new because there is nothing new under the sun. He was full of hate and venom and there is no way that he would have made a good king or leader because he did not see beyond his own hurt and pain to be able to care about future generations. It just was not in him. And at the end of the movie, I'm so glad that they decided to share their technology with the world because it's about each person helping each other. And we don't know what people are going to do. Everyone's heart, and who can know our hearts? No one knows their own individual hearts. When you're put in a situation, maybe you will um, do something that you never thought that you would do. But I believe that through prayer and supplication and wisdom, we can we can take steps to helping people in a way that's beneficial for everyone. But that will do it for this video. As always, I thank you for your subscribing and subscriptions. And thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to share it, please do so as well. And until the next time, you take care. Be blessed.